Well, good morning. And today, starting the day with you guys, I want to make an update to my investing portfolio with ETFs. Now, I started this portfolio about five months ago, beginning of the year. And I had this great idea, which was that I wanted to make a portfolio of five ETFs and see if I could beat the stock market. And man, I had high hopes for this portfolio. And what I did was I benchmarked it against the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index, which is the ETF VTI. I just wanted to see whether I could do better than the overall stock market. And I actually thought that I probably had a decent chance at it. The way I figured it is, you know, 50% chance I might outperform the market, 50% I'd underperform it. Here's the gist of what's happened. Uh, I'll just quickly run through. I invested in AVUV, which is a small cap value ETF. VB, which is another small cap ETF, just not the value. Uh, VTV, which is the large cap value ETF. VGT, which is the information technology ETF and VHT, which is Vanguard's healthcare ETF. And the way I thought this would work out was that I thought small caps would do much better than large caps during the course of this year. And I also favored uh, healthcare and value stocks because I thought in very uncertain times, like perhaps this recession people predicted we'd be stuck in, that these dependable, reliable companies would do a lot better than everything else. But I also picked VGT, this information technology, in other words, a tech ETF. I just picked it because in case I was wrong in all my other bets, I wanted to have at least some investment in tech stocks. So what happened? Well, that one kind of Hail Mary, let's at least get some tech stocks in this portfolio. That one investment turned out to be by far the best returning ETF so far this year. Um, I haven't checked this morning, but I think VGT's return is somewhere around 25, maybe 26 percent. And we're, only, we're in May of 2023. And I think part of the reason for that is that the top three holdings are Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. I think Apple's about 22 percent, Microsoft 18, NVIDIA is around 6 percent. So those three stocks have all had absolutely phenomenal years. Just uh, Apple and Microsoft well over 20%, maybe 25%. And NVIDIA, you can check it yourself. I don't, I don't even remember. I think it might be in the 90s. So when you have those as your top three holdings, it's hard to do badly. And that particular ETF has done really well. And so what does this all mean? Well, as someone who follows investing in stocks and in ETFs, it just goes to show that even when you think you have a pretty good idea of what the outcomes might be like or where the market might go or what stocks, you really have no idea. You have no clue. No, nobody at the start of this year knew that tech was going to do so well. In fact, 2022 had been just a horrible year for tech stocks. Most of them got crushed at least 25 or 30 percent. Some of them lost 40, 50 percent or more. So I think people were really hesitant, a little scared to invest in anything related to tech this year because they thought, wow, if it got hammered last year, this year might be even worse. And the reality is that it hasn't been such a bad year for tech. Anyway, just wanted to sort of share this with you guys. I haven't been making weekly videos and updating this portfolio just have other things interesting fun more important to do than watch the etfs really closely and you know really when you think about it uh who cares what happens you know on a week-to-week -week basis or really a month-to-month -month basis if you think about your investments i mean it's exciting to follow them to some extent but you're investing for, you know, not for this year. You're not putting money in the stock market because you need it in three years. You're investing in the stock market because you want this to grow in 5, 10, 20, 30 years. So 
really what happens this year doesn't really matter. And I will say just, you know, for you guys who are watching this and curious, like, what are my overall thoughts? I'm really glad that I invested also in the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, VTI. I just have been doing that every month. And that's been nice because I think that particular index is up. I, mean, I think it's about 9.5% so far this year. And if I hadn't invested in that every month, then there's a good chance that I would be sitting around here halfway through the year almost. We're in May, mid-May, and I'd be thinking, huh, should I finally get into the market? You know, should I, should I invest? Is this year not going to be so bad? And, you know, would have missed like the first half of the year's returns. And so that's, for me, I found one of the best things about choosing to go with monthly investments into an ETF or however you want to invest. It's just that it forces you to invest. I put money into the market every month, January, February, March, April, and May. And those forced monthly investments take the mental part out of investing, which is just so key. Because uh, when you think about things, when you try to figure out whether you realize you're doing it or not, you're timing the market when you're trying to figure out, should I invest this month? Or will things be better to invest later? When you try to figure out, is now the best time? Is it going to get worse? You know, one thing I've learned over time is you think you know. You think you have this feeling. I know this from my own experience, but I know this from my friends. Everybody feels like they have an idea of what's going to happen. And the reality is that nobody knows what's going to happen. And even if you're correct about it and you make a good decision once or a good prediction it just sets you up the next time because you have this false belief that you're going to be good at predicting the future the next time and of course you're not <laughs> that's i think the humbling thing about investing is you learn these mistakes on your own because it's impossible to learn them all from somebody else and uh usually when you make them and you make mistakes, you don't want to exactly tell everybody. Sometimes you don't even want to admit it to yourself. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to recap this all for you guys. Oh, and, and the other thing is, just find it hilarious that VGT wound up being one of my investments. It was actually the one that I just threw in as an afterthought. I really thought, well, I'm investing most of my ETFs this year in this five ETF portfolio or like I said small caps and large value and healthcare and I thought yeah those will those will be the ones that survive this really tough year for the market but in case I'm wrong let's throw in some VGT and I'm glad that I've been investing in that every month because like I said that's up well over 20 I think 20 25 percent that's like doubled the market's return. So the really funny thing about the investment in VGT is, like I mentioned before, it was kind of an afterthought. I just decided mainly to invest in small cap and value and healthcare ETFs this year because I thought, oh, this is going to be a really rough year for the market because that's what, whether I like it or not, I think that's what the feeling was whenever you read the news or watch videos or listen to people who seem to know a lot about stocks, the thought was that 2022 was so bad and 2023 we might be hitting this horrible recession. And so I invested, I would say, in small caps and in value, thinking that those might perhaps do well leading out of a recession or out of a really bad market crash environment like we had in 22. And the reality is, that those stocks have done worse or performed poorly compared to the overall stock market. Really well diversified ETFs make a lot of sense because they don't claim to know what's going to do best. They don't claim to pick the best sector. And that's often because, I mean, the reason that works is because a lot of times the human error, you think, oh, energy went so well, did so well last year. I'm going to double up on energy and then of course energy does horribly or you think oh tech got nailed last year 
it's going to suffer. And then, of course, tech does great. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching this. Thanks for joining on this beautiful day. And I will see you guys in the next video.